to organize and declutter your digital life, find out why living single is the new normal, ways to feel beautiful on the inside and out. Welcome to Life Love Shopping. I'm Rachel Kay. Hey there, and I'm Michelle Yarn. We're also talking about publicly humiliating your kids as punishment. Lots of parents do it. We've seen it all over. Yes. But does it work? And we've got a couple of different um, examples out there. Yeah, that yeah. you're not going to believe. So. Plus, financial gain for not getting married too young. So if you haven't found Mr. Right and you're approaching that 30 age mark, it's actually a good thing. We'll, for your we'll break wallet. it down for you. For your wallet. Okay. Yeah. All right. When it comes to finding comfort during hard times, does this sit a little too close to home? Don't you? Don't you? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just get it all out. <laughs> Oh, those look really good. I'm not going to lie. All right, yes. we've all been there. Sometimes the only thing that makes things right in the world is a massive tub of ice cream or a huge jar of candy. <laughs> However, a new study is debunking the comfort and comfort food, and here's why. You can no. blame it on your conscience. You know that feeling of guilt when you've been eating good all week long, mm -hmm. and then you ruin it all with that burger and fries. So what can you do? Well, Instead of eating, find comfort in a friend. Call a friend, talk about what's bothering you, or try using a journal, maybe putting your thoughts on paper and getting them off your chest and not in your stomach will help you feel better. And you can find other ways to improve your mood. Go to the gym, take a yoga class, go for a walk, yada, 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 or just eat the ice cream and exercise the next day. Yeah, I like <laughs> that. I, mean. I like that solution. That's my solution. <laughs> It's always better that way. <laughs> anyway, living single is the new normal. For the first time in U.S. history, there are more single people than there are married people. So transitioning the way society works would require a few changes, which is why a HuffPo blogger came up with some things that would have to change, like that annoying question, aren't you married? Yes, I swear to God, if I hear this, you'll know if I'm married. Stop asking me that. That would have to change. Instead, the looks of concern and pity would be followed up with, why aren't you single? That would have to change. A fairer government at present, there are more than 1,000 laws that provide legal or financial benefits to married couples. Most involve, of course, income taxes, but there is not much benefit for the single folks. Roommates at any age, this would have to change. Grown-ups living together, or what they're calling cooperative housing, Ugh, it's just a fancy word. Maybe the new wave is more people remain unmarried but don't want to live alone. And then small box stores. We have the big box stores where, you know, you can buy that 100 roll pack of toilet paper. It's going to turn into small product stores catering to single customers. So think Campbell's Soup for One or like this lean cuisine sort of meal. And then travel for run, travel for one. Cruises will figure out a way to appeal to single travelers and do away with the extremely pricey supplement they currently charge charge and better marriages. People don't necessarily feel as obligated to get married. With the pressure off, maybe people will only get married when they're actually in love and the time is right. I mean, grass is always greener though. Yes. It's not like, you know, married people have all the benefits. If singletons are so worried about taxes and toilet paper, like if that's the biggest concern, right. I think you're okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's grass, grass is always greener. Grass is only green where you water it. Oh, so are you quoting a, a Justin Bieber song? Maybe. Just <laughs> No, I like that quote. That's so funny. I actually it's say true, that too. It's true, though. I like you it. You have right. to, whatever you want, you have to focus on. All right, on. all right. Well, maybe so. you're recently single, but have you ever noticed you become a different person after a bad breakup? I think we've all done this. Mm -hmm. The Huffington Post laid out some post-breakup personalities. Which one are you? Okay, there's train wreck Trina. Only cares about <laughs> going out and partying. Who cares about a grown-up life event like a divorce? She's going to party like a sorority girl on academic probation and prove to everybody else but especially the ex that life is good post breakup um, there's the one they called bitter Brittany woe mm. is me she never wanted the divorce she's not gonna let anybody forget about it you know always angry always snippy this chick usually doesn't even realize how unfun she has become or maybe you're the one they call stalker Stacy monitoring <laughs> the ex it's your full-time job you get so wrapped up in it you have no time or interest in meeting anybody else the lesson in all of this is to learn to recognize your brain Makeup personality, so you can choke hold her into submission next time she makes an appearance. And I know the one that's the stalker, Stacy. Yes. And um, the unfun one too, that gets so wrapped one. up in being sad that they pass up opportunities. You the know, to meet one. new people. Yeah, you have to. You have to kind of restart and reboot. Let it go. <laughs> you can be in those 
personalities for a little while, but yeah. then you got to Temporary gotta insanity. Temporary. <laughs> All right. Well, for a fresh start, change up your wardrobe after a divorce or in general. Check out these office-friendly styles that work as hard as you do, but look just as fresh as spring. The striped skirt, always an attention getter. Just pair it with a top tucked in, and it's super business worthy. The black and white skirt, it's bold and practical, flirty, but still conservative enough. And just add a plain peplum black top and some heels with a little bit of coverage on it, and it makes it very professional. The floral blouse, it adds a pop of color to that plain button-down shirt that you have. The dangly earrings give your day a little drama and matches just about any pair of pants that you have in your closet. The pattern shift, a traditional shift dress, gets reinvigorated with tiny pops of neon and that scalloped hem. Just add a faux stone cocktail ring and it's all appropriate for the office. The bright sheath, it's conservative, but the color is what makes it super trendy. Just set it off with a single strand necklace, neutral peep toe pumps, and that will help tone down the brights for the workplace. This looks. And you know, I don't think it's any secret that we women can take forever to get ready, <laughs> but is your beauty routine starting to affect your work performance? If you want to move up in the world and still look good doing it, try doing these things every day. Breathe and balance. If you do this, you can focus on the day, you can set your pace. Just take five minutes of calm breathing in the morning and get prepared, multitask. So read your email while you're drinking your coffee or watch the news while you're straightening your hair. There's nothing more impressive to a boss than somebody who is informed. And dress for success. When you're winding down at night, decide what you wanna wear the next day. That way you're not frazzled and in a rush in the morning. And cut some beauty corners, it's okay. If you rock the right hair color and you only focus on key areas of your face, you'll end up spending less time and money on makeup up. The one thing not to skimp on though, mascara, mascara, Scare. mascara, right? It's clutch. We were just talking about yeah. this this morning about dress for the part you want, not the job that you have, right? Yeah. That will help. Uh, and when you're planning your outfits, just think that way. Yeah, I like it. Yes. Well, looking and feeling your best from the inside out is, of course, a top priority, especially as we begin to peel off our bulky clothing layers finally. Joining us with this scoop is Self Magazine's beauty director, Elaine DeFarley. Hi, I'm Elaine DeFarley. I'm the beauty director at Self Magazine, and we're here today to talk about beauty from the inside out. We all want to look and feel our best for spring, and it all starts with nutrition. It's National Nutrition Month, and so we're going to talk about breakfast, which is the most important meal of the day. It's really important to find something that's simple and easy for you to have that you love. And what we're loving right now is from Mom Brands. It's a new cereal called Spooners, and it comes in five delicious flavors like mixed berries, cinnamon, chocolate and there's no artificial flavors, preservatives, high fructose corn syrup and it's got a stamp from the Whole Grains Council and it's got five grams of fiber so it doesn't get better than that and it's great for the whole family. They're super crunchy and everybody's loving them. And from Simple Skin Care, we have a new skincare range that's good for even sensitive skin types. It's really good for everybody. And they have a very holistic approach to beauty, which is what we're all about. It's about introducing a simple advisory board comprised of experts from the worlds of fitness, nutrition, psychiatry, so that you can feel and look your best. And they have a new simple foaming facial cleanser, which I'm loving, which is really lightweight yet gets rid of all the impurities and makeup and all the other stuff that's on your skin and leaves your skin feeling rejuvenated and moisturized. So that's really great to get that glow for spring. And you can go to simpleskincare.com for more information. And speaking of a glow, we've got a great new breakthrough from Physicians Formula. It's called the Bronze Booster Glow Boosting Airbrushing Bronzing Veil. It's a new deluxe enriched bronzer with exclusive technologies that deliver a lightest air skin affecting smoothing finish for a natural looking glow so that you look lit from within, just like Gwyneth Paltrow on the self cover this month. Um, and it's only $15.95 at drugstores. And you can go to self.com for a lot more information or pick up the magazine. We have a whole new look. It's a whole new attitude and we have a lot of fun things in there and it's all about having fun and it's all about you. So they say you are what you eat, right? Well, the same rule applies to your skin. And when you're searching for diets and ways to eat healthy, you'll find a lot of celebrities are going vegan. Most recently, Beyonce. She's spoken out about her partial vegan diet, which she's getting some flack for, I don't know. Basically, she takes one day a week, cuts out the animal products. So no meat, no dairy, no eggs. So yes, 
Vegan diets are popular, but whether you do it for health reasons, moral beliefs, or both, Yahoo Shine got a doctor's take on the vegan diet and how it can help or hurt your skin. So when it comes to meat, it can be loaded with saturated fat. And we know that's not only bad for your heart, but unhealthy arteries mean your skin won't get the nutrients it needs to give you that J-Lo glow that yes, everybody wants, right? We all want that. And inflammation, by the way, can also break down your collagen and elastin in your skin, which affects wrinkles and how your face looks. Ditto for dairy. Some studies have even shown dairy can lead to breakthroughs. Breakouts. But as with any diet choice, you can't just expect to ditch the meat and dairy and all of a sudden have this perfect complexion. It all depends on the foods you choose to replace those calories with. Keep this in mind. Oreos are vegan, who knew? But that doesn't mean they're healthy. <laughs> but they're it's, delicious. Oh, they're delicious. But it's fruits and veggies. That's the way to go. So think things like cucumbers, watermelon, cantaloupe, anything with a high water content that's going to help hydrate your skin and it'll plump out fine lines and bring on that radiant glow that everybody's going for. Yeah. I think Beyonce is actually onto something with that one day diet yeah. because that's hard to just all of a sudden cut out meat yeah. and that would be a great Maybe way to start with that and then work in. your way up. Yeah. I guess like the hardcore vegans aren't appreciating it because they're saying you're not, you're just eating not more really. fruits and veggies. You're not really like making it a lifestyle change. Just so. a daily diet change. <laughs> Still more to come on Life Love Shopping. We've seen it a lot in the news all over on the internet. Parents punishing kids by public humiliation. So we're discussing that topic next. All right, plus how to spring clean that digital life. Get rid of all of your clutter. We'll show you how coming up next. And we're sharing celebrities who look better sans a tan throughout the show. What do you think? Definitely. <laughs> desktop cluttered with icons? Does your email have an overload of junk mail? You just may be a digital hoarder, but don't feel bad because apparently I am too. So helping us get our digital hoarding under control is Soleil Moonfry. Thanks for joining us, Soleil. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, and I was a digital hoarder also, so don't feel bad. <laughs> okay, so I'm in the club with everybody else, but let's lay it out here. What is a digital hoarder? You know, do you have like a million emails, literally a thousand emails in your inbox, because it turns out that one in four people does, and that's how I used to be, and now I'm getting a handle on it. It's spring cleaning, it's time to refresh, time to upgrade that PC, and so we have Outlook.com, which makes it super easy easy here to sweep through those old emails, really get organized, categorize everything. I have two little girls and my husband, and we all have different schedules, and this really helps you to organize your life. I also love pictures. So are you one of those people that has a million pictures? Yes, and I don't <laughs> know what's around. what. Yep, they're everywhere. So this is so terrific because this connects us so easily. We go right into our pictures, we have our sky drive, and right there, we have all of our photographs. We can share them with our family. It makes it super easy to organize our lives. And of course, when we're organized in our digital lives, it makes our physical lives better. Well, and see, the thing is I always avoid getting organized because I'm afraid it's going to take forever. So how do you keep it simple and quick? This is super easy. You can go to Outlook.com and get very, very organized with your emails. It's super easy. These are fantastic devices that allow us a very easy user interface. I love this. I love taking photos. So this is a perfect example of how I stay connected. The SkyDrive is like your cabinet in the sky. <laughs> Helps you stay organized. You can go to Windows windows.com to learn more and I'm finally getting a handle on all of that clutter. And you mentioned how getting organized digitally helps us in the real world. Do you have tips since you're a busy mom just like I am how to keep your real world life organized too? Absolutely. You know, one of the things for us is that we love our digital lives, but we also love taking that into a physical experience. So th something that's been really special for my girls and I is we've been scrapbooking a lot. So I love that this allows me to look at the photos with the kids, and this has been so much fun. We sit on the floor, we do homework together, we look at our favorite pictures, and then we print them and we create scrapbooks. So it's really taking that digital experience and bringing that offline so that we can have that authenticity in our house and that experience, that hands-on experience experience, which makes it so much fun. And if I had it organized, I might be motivated to actually do all those crafting projects I've well, been wanting it, to it, do. It gives you more time. Once your digital life is organized, it gives you more time to have that quality time with your family. I love it. Thank you so much, Soleil. Just head to our website for more information. 
There are all sorts of parenting styles. Some let their child do whatever they want, while others attach an actual leash. <laughs> well, here's a look at some different parenting personalities and see if you fit. First up, the helicopter parent. You'll know because you'll always see their child with them. They get the name because they hover over their kids. Even when the kids do get away, say maybe to go to school, you can bet a helicopter parent is sticking their nose into their kids' business. The lawnmower parent, you'll never see an obstacle in front of the child because mom or dad has already mowed it down. <laughs> Think the dad who does his kid's homework or the mom who wouldn't dream of letting her little snowflake have to clean his own room. Oh so these parents make everything easy peasy. And then the other extreme, the free range parent, this has been around for centuries. There are degrees of this style, but it's a very hands off method, basically letting them figure it out on their own, like letting a nine year old ride the subway alone. Mm, Lots right. of options. Well, no matter your parenting personality, there's one style that seems to be trending lately, the public humiliation punishment. The most recent example, Florida parents, Gentry and Renee Nickel. So they made their 13-year-old stand at a busy intersection with this sign. It says, mm. I'm a self-entitled teen with no respect for authority. I'm also super smart, yet I have three Ds because I don't care. Okay, so certainly this is not the first time we've seen this. There no. were other examples, right? Yes, there was this seventh grader in Cali who was suspended for bullying. Her mom made her stand outside various schools with this sign, or this fifth grader suspended for planning to bully a classmate. Planning to do it. Right, okay. planning to do it. This sign says, I was sent to school to get an education, not to be a bully. I was not raised this way. Hmm. Or the 12 year old who took 100 bucks from his cousin's wallet, had to stand outside with this. I'm, a, I'm on the fence with this. Okay. I don't know. I feel like there's the one argument that, hey, at least these parents care enough that they're trying to get creative and do something. Mm -hmm. But then like a fifth grader, that's very young. Um, there was one story of parents who made their kids stand with a sign that says honk if I need an education because he had a low GPA. That's a waste of the kid's time. He's, yeah, he's he not going to get an education standing out on the street. But is that, gonna, is that going to help him or is that going to make him feel stupid and feel like now I hate school because everybody's making fun of me? I think it's going to make, it's going to hurt him. I don't think if you really want to help your kids, whatever the problem is, okay, so that kid that stole $100 right. or whatever, figure out a way to teach him how to learn how to make that money back. Yeah. You know, that's where he's really going to learn. Make like, him oh, clean geez, your house and do some stuff. To <laughs> earn that money. I mean, yes, you need to punish kids, yeah. of course. Course, but whatever way you do that, whatever works for you, I guess works. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's that's just tough. I, I don't know. It's a tough topic. <laughs> All right, you well, we're trying to, I, I know, I just, I, I have a hard enough time just letting him cry at night. We're trying to get him to sleep through the night. So when he's older, I don't know if I can do Will that. Well, you let me know how we'll that see. works. <laughs> All right, when we return, we're going to tell you the financial benefit of finding your husband later in life, in your 30s. Yes, plus a close-up look at the biggest, most over-the-top celeb engagement rings. Uh -oh. I mean, I don't even think a tan is going to help that one out. I'm no. sorry. She's such a mess. She'll get it together, hopefully. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a new reason that women should not stress about finding the one in their 20s. Marrying later in life can be better for your bank account. Do tell. Yes, according to a new study, ladies who walk down the aisle in their 30s earn an average of 56% more than singles. The average marrying age for women in the U.S. is 27. And waiting to get married is better on the bank account due to childbirth. So. The earlier you marry, the earlier you have kids, the longer it takes to climb that corporate ladder, thus less money at that age. But when it comes to guys, it's the reverse. Men who tie the knot in their 20s have higher incomes no matter what education level. Their average marrying age is 29. The reason why they benefit from early marriages is because their brides serve as a confident booster at home and in the boardroom for them. Do you find these supplies? They, I think so. The guys have some motivation to make some money for their ladies. Right, and behind every successful man. Yep. She's a successful yep. woman. All right, one thing you do gain too when you get married, a diamond ring. Some She's are got big one. and some are small, right? <laughs> yes, they are. And then Morgan Miller is here with who's got the biggest rocks in Hollywood. Hey ladies, yeah, everybody knows that Hollywood ladies get the best diamonds, right? We're taking a look at the things that are weighing down those pretty little hands of Hollywood's hottest. Justin Timberlake landed Jessica Biel with this awesome diamond ring. It's estimated to be worth $130,000, but it's got more sentimental value because JT designed it himself. Jen Aniston, though, is trumping that with this whopper given to her by her fiance, Justin Theroux. We still don't know who designed it, but what we do know is that it's an eight-carat diamond ring and it's worth $500,000. Now, these next two are rocking 
15 million, so get ready to clutch your pearls. Okay, <laughs> Nick Cannon hand it Mariah Carey, this 17 karat pink diamond ring from Jacob and Company. Oh, wow. This cost $2.5 million, and yet it has nothing on this ring. Jay-Z gave Beyonce this huge diamond from Lorraine Schwartz, but she rarely wears it out, why? Because it's worth five million wow. bucks. It's a lot of dough. But I, I gotta say, I was surprised that Justin only spent 130,000. I know, but by yes. celebrity status too, it's so fun yeah, to be it's like, only oh, $130,000 on a ring? But no. she doesn't really seem like she wears that much jewelry anyway. But that's why the diamond matters. That's why it matters. if you don't wear it that much, yeah. then the least you could do is have a nice one when you Yeah, do. listen up guys out there, my future <laughs> husbands, spend a lot on the one ring and the rest of it, whatever, just I buy a new vacation. It's what cool too that he designed it. Like, I gotta think like the heirloom diamonds, that would be that's my all-time like best way to go yeah. because it's got the history and usually they're pretty simple and big. You yeah, know? I yeah, I agree. I just, I don't know, just comparing 2.5 million to 130,000 sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Wah, wah. Would, you, <laughs> would you want the like 5 million ring? I wouldn't want the five because I know I'm I'm so clumsy. I would lose it. I know it'd be gone <laughs> you, in like two seconds. You would seconds. basically just be a walking billboard for please right. exactly. Come me Rob right me. Now. Take please. this ring. <laughs> Tell yours. All right. Well, make sure you guys stay Thanks, in touch Morgan. with us. Go to our Facebook page and like us or follow us on Twitter at Life Love Shop.